Hi, so today I'm going to be answering a question that I've actually wanted to do a video on for a while, but I haven't been able to find the time to. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to answer this person's question on camera and explain my reasoning for it. So this is a pretty cool question because it shows that some of the content that I'm putting out there is being listened to and not simply ignored. So again, I get all these requests for things like schematics when I have the URL for the website to get the schematics in the middle of the PDF file inside 72 font and you're still asking. So that, that kind of shows me that you're not really engaging with the content, which kind of makes it feel like a complete and utter waste of time. But then I get questions like this, which show me that you're actually watching and paying attention and learning and want to learn more, that make it feel like this kind of isn't all a waste of time. So I was pretty happy to get this question. So without further ado, the question. Hi, Lewis. In a lot of these videos, I notice you're talking about how you shouldn't spend more than 20 to 40 minutes on a border pair because you would like to avoid what you call the rabbit hole to hell or the problem that you're never going to solve. I understand the reasoning for this. However, your BGA rework videos often are one to two hours in length or are 30 to 50 minute segments of an existing border pair video. Since the BGA rework takes longer by itself than the maximum amount of time that you say you allot to a board, do you find BGA rework in and of itself to be a rabbit hole to hell? And this is a really, really good question. I didn't take it uh, critically at all. I think this is an excellent question, and I love an opportunity to answer it. Yes and no. So let me explain a little bit more about the rabbit hole to hell, why I only spend a certain amount of time on boards. I'm going to talk a little bit about where these parts actually come from, and then I'd like to talk about the yeses and the noes of that answer. So first things first. Uh, the reason that I think it's not worthwhile to spend more than 20 to 40 minutes on a board is because it's not a straightforward repair. It's not like you do this and you're guaranteed at the end to get paid for it. It's not like you start following this little troubleshooting path and you know at the end of it, if you just put work in, that you're going to fix it. It's very, very, very easy to spend hours and hours on it and not be anywhere remotely near giving a customer back something that works, much less something where this, you know, even the fan spins. So since we have a no-fix, no-pay model, I really, really need to save my time for the ones that can work. Because again, it's really, really easy to spend two, three, four, five hours on a single board where you cannot charge a dime for it, where its resale value is just as good as the $15, $20 pieces of shit with holes in them that you can buy on the internet from Alibaba. It's like, you know, that, that's pretty much that. So I need to save my time, which means I need to be able to identify when a board is a rabbit hole to hell and not spend time on it. And it's good that you asked this about BGA rework. So let's talk a little bit about chip replacements in general, so I can just give you a little bit of a backstory. So let's say I need to replace the TPS 51125 on the board. There are many websites that sell this. Those websites are websites that are authorized by Texas Instruments, that are supplied known good chips by Texas Instruments and Texas Instruments distributors. So I know that when I buy this spool of chips, these chips are good. And when I put this onto a motherboard, if it doesn't work, 99.9999% of the time, either something else is wrong, or I didn't do my diagnosis right, or I missoldered it. But this is good, and that's good. A great example, like mouser.com. This is an LP8550 backlight chip, and this is actually ball grid array soldering. So this is a chip that is made by Texas Instruments, and it is resold by Mouser.com. Mouser.com is author, you know, a good, legitimate, authorized distributor of Texas Instruments chipsets. They're not getting the Texas Instruments chipsets that fell off the back of a truck. They're not an unauthorized vendor. Again, if I call Texas Instruments and I say, do you sell to Mouser.com? Or if I want to buy your products, is Mouser.com a good place? They're going to say yes, because they're an authorized distributor. They're, they are a place that I can go. They're a place I can trust. So again, when I get this chip, I know that the chips are good 99% of the time. I know if I put it on the board and it doesn't fix my problem, again, I either didn't solder it right or I had another problem. So this is not a rabbit hole. Replacing these, this is not a rabbit hole to hell. And it also can be done in a very short time period. Now, what makes BGA rework a rabbit hole are two distinct pieces of the repair. The first piece of the repair is the time. Like, really. I mean, again, there are all these videos on the internet where you see all these people doing it to techno music. I, I, I mean this. I really do. Because I have net... I have yet to be able to find a single BGA rework video that wasn't fast-forwarded to shitty techno music. I wish they had them because I would have loved to watch it and learn instead of fuck up boards on my own to figure out how to do this. But I digress. They all make it look like it's like, it's like a five or six-minute process where you go, and it's done. It's not. It's 40 minutes. It's an hour. It's an hour and 10 minutes. It's an hour and 30 minutes. Sometimes it can be even up to two hours depending on the difficulty of board. And if the chip didn't work or the soldering job didn't work or you're, you know, you're... 
uh, your circuit breaker blew in the middle of a profile and you have to reball the chip. That's, that, that's, that's happened before. And um, that, that, that's a lot of time to spend on a single job that's no fix, no pay. So that's the first aspect of it being a rabbit hole to hell. The second is, you know, what is it that you're replacing when you're doing BGA chip replacement? What are you replacing and, uh, you know, where did you get it from? So again, with these chips, if I call up Texas Instruments and I go, where can I buy this chip where I know that it's going to be, it's going to come in new sealed manufacturer packaging and it's something that you endorse, they're more than happy to tell me where to buy this so I know I'm getting a good chip. Now, let's say that I want to fix a motherboard that has a graphics problem because the graphics chip is known to die and fail for no reason. So I go and I contact AMD and I go, hey, AMD, if I want a 216-080-9000 and I want to buy 50 of these, where do I go? AMD is going to tell me to go fuck myself. I mean, really, they have no interest in doing business with me. They have no interest in selling these chipsets to anybody. If I say, hey, AMD, I want to buy like an X2 4800 processor, because that's the last time I bought something from AMD, because it's the last time they made anything that was any fucking good. It was like, you know, nine years ago, but that's a topic for another video. If I say, where do I want to buy that? They'll say, why are you wasting our time? Go to Newegg. But if I ask them about this, they're not returning my email. They're hanging up on me. They're, they're just going to look at me like, why the fuck do you even want this? This gets sold to Foxconn. This gets sold to Quanta. This gets sold to Apple. This does not get sold to us. And again, if I tell them, well, uh, I call up AMD and I go, hey, AMD, assuming they even answer the phone, which they're never going to answer the phone for you and me. And I go, hey, AMD, if I want to buy a GPU and I want to know that that GPU is good, can I go to CIC? Can I go to eBest? They're going to look at me and go, who the fuck is CIC? Who the fuck is eBest? And where are they getting our stuff? They're, again, because these vendors, and sadly, this is where most of this shit comes from. These vendors, they're, they're not getting these through the most legitimate channels. They're not getting these through the most legitimate means. If they were, they would always have stock. Everything would always work. You wouldn't be getting batches with fucked up date codes, and you wouldn't be getting chips where like three or four of them in a row, when you when Different people are soldering them using different procedures, work for a month or two months, and then <clears throat> when the original one, as shitty as it is, worked for over two years. And I know that a lot of people are going to troll there, and a lot of people are going to say, well, oh, it never happens to me. Ugh. You know damn well if you do a lot of motherboard repair. You know damn well that a lot of the BGA chipsets that you get are bad, and you know that you're trolling if you say, well, none of my BGA chipsets are ever bad. No, 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 no. You know that there are a lot of bad chipsets out there. And I know that you know that you've soldered them. And if you haven't, you just haven't been doing it very long. And again, when it comes to certain GPU issues, I know there's also going to be a lot of people who say, well, I reflow that with a heat gun all the time and it never bothers me. You must be doing it wrong if you're putting on new chips and some of them die. And again, one of the, re the replies that I'll often have to that is, if you're doing this in, like, let's say, uh, Kansas City or you know, San Diego or Williamsburg in Brooklyn, you're going to have, I'm not saying that the people there are better or richer or any, any means, because a lot of people think this is an elitist thing to say, but you're going to have a lot more people who are a part of hipster and art culture, people who are more likely to do things like graphics design and edit video, people who are more likely to use their GPU, people who are more likely to fuck it up. So if you are working on a $400 PC and you do a lot of graphics chips on those, they probably die legitimately out of the blue for strange reasons. And when you replace it, it's, it's actually going to work and last a long time. And even if, if you have somebody who bought a Mac in the area, they may use a lot of the features and functionality of it, but they may not really be an art person. But when you move to the, these places, again, I, I like to joke and say, you know, uh, New York is one of the hipster artist, hipster person capitals of the world. It really is. You're going to find more people using Macs for media and video and graphics design and editing purposes here than you are in a lot of other areas of the country. This is just, it's just part of the culture. I'm not saying it's better. I'm not saying it's worse. I'm not going to even get into what I think of hipsters. But what I'm saying here is that a lot of the, uh, they're more likely to stress that stuff. And I know if they do, and I know if the chipset came from a place that I don't trust, that that's not something that is going to end well. Let's end it at that. And that's, that's really the thing with BGA rework. It's, you know, again, if you're replacing this, which you can do with a hot air station without needing uh, Zalmo, Again, you can get this from an authorized distributor. You know it works. 
But this shit, like, again, when, when I'm buying chips that are uh, that, that like fell off of the back of a truck from CIC or eBest, and then like, oh, the, the, it gets better with SMCs. So like, SMCs are coming off of boards with holes in them. Let's see if I can get a good example of a board with a hole in it. So yeah, like when I'm getting an SMC, it comes off of a board that looks like this. This. Like, again, it's not like I say, hi, Apple, can you tell me where I can get an SMC from? Sure. Here's where you can buy them. Pre-balled. New with programming and guaranteed to work. No, I'm, I'm taking it off of this. Like, you know, you know, what, you know what happened to this? Like, a little Chinese guy took a fucking flathead screwdriver, or I don't have a flathead, so bear with me, and he just, like, mm, jammed the CPU. Then, like, mm, jam the RAM, and mm, and you just gotta hope that in the process of him stabbing the shit off of here, because if you saw this, this was not desoldered. They fucking stabbed that crap off of there. That he didn't stab his SMC. And this is how I do logic board repair. This is how I run a professional business. This is how I do my job. And I am sick and tired of it. So in some ways, yes, BGA rework is a rabbit hole. Not only do the jobs start when I, as soon as I know I have to do BGA rework, I instantly add minimum 40 minutes to a job. I instantly add 40 minutes to it. Secondly, does this work? I don't know. So again, if my estimate is wrong when it comes to this, or when it comes to this, whatever, I wasted 90 seconds of time. Who cares? What are you going to do, cry about 90 seconds? If the chip is bad, oh no, I have to put another one on. I'm going to waste another 30 seconds of time. Who cares? But when I spend 40 minutes of time on something, you bet your ass I better be getting paid at the end of it. Again, I'm not saying 40 minutes on the entire repair. I mean, I'm spending 40 minutes on one element of the repair. When I do that, you bet your ass I better be getting paid for it. So when I, and again, like I, I have a board over here where, you know, I, I, I diagnosed it as either an SMC or a PCH issue. And like when I have a PCH that came from eBay and an SMC that came from a board that got here from Alibaba after having a hole driven through it, like, do, uh, my estimate may have been correct. My, my diagnosis may have been correct. But fuck if I'll ever know. And also, fuck if I'm going to go through two or three or four PCHs and SMCs when soldering them is 40 minutes apiece to find out. If I go through two or three of that chip, that's easily, easily three hours spent on a motherboard when I don't even know if the chip works and I don't even know if my estimate is correct. And maybe my diagnosis is correct. Maybe something else is wrong. Is it worth it to test out if something else is wrong when it takes me 30 or 90 seconds to, to try out all my little ideas? Sure. Is it worth it to see if something else is wrong when it may take 40 minutes or an hour and a half or two hours if the chip is not good? No, really isn't. And, and, the, and the likelihood, again, the likelihood of that stuff being bad, it's really, really high because, you know... Those people like at eBest and CIC, and, and again, the reason I'm mentioning those two companies instead of others is, you know what happens when I mention other companies to buy from? You all start buying from them, and then I can't buy from them anymore. So again, CIC and eBest, I'm just using as examples because they're the first ones that show up on eBay. The other suppliers, again, they're just as bad, but I'm not giving you the information because I would like to have somebody left to actually buy from. But you know, all these places, uh, it, again, they're all doing the same thing. If you ask AMD, you ask Intersil for, you know, you ask Intel, you ask ATI, hey, do you know if X company is great? They're going to say, who the hell is X company? And that's the problem. So there are certain circumstances under which I don't find BGA rework to be a rabbit hole. And they're really limited. It's when you know for sure that you have a problem that is, you, you guarantee that it's that. Like it's not, could be SMC or it could be line going to SMC or it could be this. No, you know it's SMC. It's, this is a board where it's always the graphics chip. 99.9% .9 of the time it's the graphics chip. I hit the power button. The gra it freezes as soon as I run Furmark. It works with another screen and it's a known issue. Then let's like, even though you're putting that 40 minutes in or that hour in, you know for sure that that is the problem. Even if you have a bad chip, it's starting to become a rabbit hole in an hour and a half to two hours. Or let's say it's a chip where you know it's, it's guaranteed good. You actually got it from a good vendor which again is kind of rare, but you don't, you're not really sure in your diagnosis. It could be a PCH issue, or it could be an issue with you know, vias in the board that connect the BIOS to the PCH, or it could be something else. Then 
it's kind of a rabbit hole, but you, you have a source for your chip and you know it's good. There are some of those inner sill PCHs with a little eye on them where it's really, really hard to buy them and, and they're not good. But then you have things like, like older MCP issues where it could be the MCP or it could be the MOX or it could be something else. And it's taken off of a used motherboard. So you're not sure about your diagnosis. You're not sure about the chip. But you're sure that it's going to be 40 minutes minimum to solder it. Fuck no. Rabbit hole, really. And, and the reason I'm doing this video is because there, there's, this, there's this myth that the motherboards get fixed by the BGA machine. That all the boards get fixed by the BGA machine. That the reason that you can't fix motherboards is you don't have a BGA machine. And that you need to get a BGA machine. And I'm here to tell you that you don't really need it. Again, in 2007 and 8 and 9, when NVIDIA was fucking up left and right with the terrible chips, this was, th this was good because you can make stupid amounts of money off of having a BGA machine because the, you knew that the problem was always the graphics chip. And on rare occasion, you could actually get graphics chips that wouldn't die again. Um, but now, let's fast forward a little. So PC laptops in general, they're not worth what they used to be. A, you don't have as many BGA failures as you used to. B, even with, with BGA failure, a PC laptop, again, this is not the ages of the DV9000 where PCs are commanding a lot of money and those PCs are failing. You go to Best Buy and like a PC is 300 bucks. Does it really make sense to have a professional solder or a new BGA chipset on it when a new computer, again, like I, I, I saw one today, it was 15 inch. It had four gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive, pretty good CPU, Compact, nice design, 279 plus tax. Does it, does, do you want to be the person soldering a new BGA chipset onto there for $30? No. Uh, you had all the MacBook failures. So you had, the, again, the 2008 model, 2007 8 model. They're done for it. We, we would, if you, you should not be fixing those for a number of reasons. That, that's for another video. The 2011 model, covered under the Apple's uh, extended warranty, extended recall program, whatever you want to call it. The Retina the year after it. That doesn't even fail, but if it does, they covered it under the same thing. The one after that mostly is using, ret is using the Iris graphics instead of the regular graphics, the discrete one, because people have to pay an extra 500 bucks for that option. Most people don't, so most people get the Iris. You have the IMAX that, again, they use the integrated graphics on the most of the lower-end models. And the 27-inch IMAX that has the graphics issues, that's a model that is also covered by their extended warranty program. So for the most part, all the ways that you can kind of make money off of BGA rework, the simple ways, they're, they're kind of gone. Those days are, though, that's not 2015. That was 2007, 8, and 9. That's no longer the, the true in 2015. And that's one of the things I like getting across with this channel. Most of the repairs that I make money on are not BGA repairs. They're circuit repairs. There, let me run a wire to this. There, let me replace this QFN package. There's, let me run a wire from this resistor to this IC. There's, oh, this inductor is bad. Oh, this trace or this V or whatever is bad. It's not that. Because again, a lot of people think they get the machine, and then when they get the machine, they're going to start fixing motherboards. And what you're going to find is if you're one of those people that think that when you buy the machine, that you just like put, the, you just put it on there and like it just... The automatic one just picks up the chip, puts a new one on by itself, and it's all fixed. You're going to be really, really disappointed when you, found that, when you find out that that's not the case. So I got this because of the 2011 MacBook Pro graphics chip problem. There are places that do that. I was not exactly happy with the results that they were giving. I was not exactly happy with their excuses for the results that they were giving. And I'm going to be 100% honest with you. While our results were better, what I'm finding is that four different people using four different methodologies, using chipsets from several different suppliers, if you give this to a graphics designer, it doesn't matter. It's going to be dead. And something tells me, again, something tells me that when Apple is replacing this under their own warranty program, that they're lasting a little bit longer than what's being done by independent repair shops. And again, my hypothesis for this is very simple. When I buy this chip, it's coming from a Texas Instruments authorized reseller. Where, I, where they, Texas Instruments is taking chips from their good batch and they're saying, we know these are good, you know, car, you know, go and sell them to our customers so our customers can be happy. But when it comes to these chips over here, AMD is saying, hey, fuck you, we don't want you to have these. So other companies are finding ways to get these chipsets. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know who they're stealing them from. I don't know what back of a truck they came off of. I'm not sure what fucked up manufacturing batch they came out of. But let me tell you something. 
It ain't the same. And it, it's, again, the, the defect rate. The defect rate, when you are buying, let's say, an LP8550 versus um, an, an MCP uh, from eBest or CIC or a graphics chip from any of these people or a Northbridge from any of these people, there is a big fucking difference in the ratio of what you get that works to what you get that doesn't work when you're buying these chips from an authorized distributor and when you're buying a chip that you cannot buy through an authorized distributor at all. And again, my theory here is it's, it's just not the same thing. It's coming out of their shit pile. And that's one of the reasons I consider BG Everywork to be a rabbit hole. So above all else, let's just go over some of the basic points in this video. I do find it to be a rabbit hole to hell if it takes more than 20 to 40 minutes to fix a board. I don't suggest you take more than 20 to 40 minutes on a board unless you are doing it for the sole purpose of learning. And be honest with yourself. Tell yourself, are you really doing this because you want to learn or are you doing this simply because it's going to make you feel better to solve the problem? You fix boards to make money. You fix this stuff so that you can pay your rent. You don't fix this stuff so that you can feel better. It's not like you did it and now, oh, I'm a big man. I can figure out what other people can. Look at me. You're like, no, that's not the reason to do this. And I, I know a lot of people are going to laugh and joke and say this is bullshit and troll me on this point. But there are people that directly associate their self-worth and, and how, you know, how good they are as a person with being able to figure out these problems. And while I'm happy to be able to figure out problems, while it makes me feel good to figure out problems, I also say, you know what? This does not represent my self-worth as a human being. This is a bullshit problem. I'm not going to say that I'm bad at what I do because I choose to walk away from the bullshit problem because at the end of the day, this is about making money. This is not about my self-worth. And it just goes poof, off into the bin. So if it takes you more than 20 to 40 minutes, and it's not a learning experience, I strongly recommend you don't fix it. And the reason I find BGA rework to be a rabbit hole in many cases is because most of the time when you're doing BGA rework, you're working with chipsets that you cannot buy from a legitimate vendor where you know that they're coming from the manufacturer's good pile and not their shit stock. Again, lots, I know this with panel vendors. Lots of panel vendors have shit stock. If you have an LG box of screens and it says A, that's good. If you have an LG box of screens and it says nine, that means you just bought parts from LG's ship pile. And that's what ends up in the, you know, Taiwan Screen Optronics and the um, Moho Techs and the Palm Stream Internationals of the world. And, and that's, and that's what, you're, what you have to watch out for. And that's what you have to be aware of when you're buying this stuff. Again, if you want to go ahead and chase these to hell and figure out if this is a good batch or not, by all means, go ahead and do so. But just know that on, again, if you ask AMD, if you ask Intel, hey, Intel, I would like this PCH chip. Intel is going to say, go fuck yourself. If you say, hey, AMD, I like this graphics chip, or I want this Northbridge, they're going to say, hey, are you Apple, Quanta, Fox, Connor, Dell? And you go, no, I'm XYZ Repair Shop. They're going to go, yeah, I'm pretty sure you should just go fuck yourself, and you're going to be stuck with the dumpster divers like CIC and eBest and everybody else and Alibaba and eBay and so on and so forth. And thirdly, again, it comes down to the time, the sheer time that you're going to spend on it. It's 40 minutes to solder a BGA chipset. Maybe another, like, again, include board cleaning, lifting, putting another one on. If anything goes wrong in the process, add another 20 minutes to a half hour on there to remove it, to reball it, to solder a new one. Add another 20 to 30 or 40 minutes if the reballing it doesn't work to remove it, to clean again, to solder a new one. Add to the fact that, again, it's not even like that. It's not even when you're buying chips in spools and you don't know if they're good. We have to go back to, again, all the chips that are coming off of boards that look like this. Again, if I have to replace the SMC on a retina, like, look at this. Look, somebody took a fucking bite out of this. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Yeah, focus on my face. Yeah, face autofocus. Great. Here, see this? Look, somebody took a bite out of this. This is a joke. This is a complete fucking joke. And look, right next to it <coughs> is the SMC. This is sad. I don't want to take this off and pray that it works after putting a bunch of little balls on it that's going to take me 30 minutes of cursing and screaming and then soldering it onto the board. Not only, not, not only do I not always know if the chip I'm replacing is bad until I replace it, if that was the actual problem, but I don't even know if that's good. Again, so BGA rework, yes, total rabbit hole. And do I do it? 
I do the BGA rework jobs, but I'm not doing it at the beginning of the day. I'm waiting to get everything else out of the way, and then when there's nothing better to do at the end of the day, then I'll start chomping through these ones. But you, you bet your ass I'm not letting them waste my time. And again, in terms of whether or not you should buy a machine, honestly, in 2015, unless you know, unless you are guaranteed sure that you're going to have a bunch of BGA rework jobs where you know they're going to be simple, where you know you have a good supplier, and there's a steady stream of that specific thing coming in, I do not recommend that you buy a BGA rework machine. I, I suggest you invest in your brain. Buy a power supply that you could use to test boards. Buy a good microscope. Buy a good uh, fume extractor so you don't get cancer inhaling this stuff. Buy a, good, you know, buy a good hot air station and soldering iron and multimeter and oscilloscope. Buy all that other stuff. But again, making an investment, like a good BGA rework machine, like a, not some like little pile of shit where the plates are broken when it arrives and half of the crap doesn't work and it runs differently every time. A half decent BGA rework machine. You're looking at about twenty five to twenty seven hundred dollars starting. And a lot of people are gonna argue with that, but just 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 like I, I know that you could probably find a deal for twenty three hundred. Some people are gonna say you can't do it outside of three thousand. Just keep it simple for me. Twenty five to twenty seven hundred. That's an investment that you could put into a microscope, the soldering iron, the, you know, the, the hot air station, the power supply, the multimeter, the oscilloscope, the solder, the flux, and a bunch of chips for all these boards, a collection of dead boards that you can actually get started. You could spend it on all of that, or you could spend it on the BGA rework machine. You know, this almost reminds me of the music industry. It really does. It reminds me of those arguments where people are like, should I buy a recording console? And, you know, because customers like to see it. And everybody thinks all the music gets done on the console. And... I'm not saying that consoles are not better than recording or mixing in the box for those of you that are audio engineers. What I'm saying, and I believe a lot of you are going to agree with me, if you had thirty dollars or $40,000 and you could use that to acoustically treat your control room, acoustically treat your live room, to buy instruments, to buy guitar amps, to buy a great selection of Neumann and AKG and Shure and Sennheiser microphones that you could use to buy good monitors, that you could use to buy good analog to digital converters, that you could use to buy a good recording computer, that you could use to you know, do all of these things... Or you could buy a Neotech Elon or a used Trident ADB and then have no studio left, no microphones, no monitors. Like, what would you choose to buy? Again, and, and I think even the most uh, fanatical people about mixing out of the box on a console are going to say, I'd rather go to the studio with the in-the-box software setup, but that actually has everything that I need, rather than sit in front of a console and like say, okay, what am I going to do? Like, you know hook up an XLR cable to the like, little contact in my phone and use that to record uh, people? You know, No. You, if you have a certain limited budget, by all means, skip the BGA rework machine. There are going to be jobs that you're not going to be able to figure out, and there are going to be jobs that you don't know how to do. But again, just look at this channel. I make money doing this. I make enough money doing this that I can support four employees, a store in the most expensive, one of the most expensive cities in the United States, and, uh, you know, a $6,000 recording setup and the time to use that $6,000 recording setup to show you how all this works. I can afford all of that off of being good at motherboard repair. How many of my board repairs that I film are circuit repairs versus BGA repairs? Again, I'm actually making money doing this. I'm not trying to brag about it. I'm just saying that this business model is sustainable and it makes good money as is. I would say like less, legitimately less than 5% of it is BGA rework. So by all means, if you're looking for an excuse to spend your money on other tools other than BGA rework equipment, go for it. Again, I'm not saying that BGA rework equipment is useless. I'm not saying that you should never buy it or seek to buy it. What I'm saying is that in 2015, all of that easy money from all of those easy GPUs, again, 2011 MacBook Pro, 2007-8 MacBook Pro, all those fucked up NVIDIA chips from 2007 to 2009, a lot of that easy money is gone. A lot of that's gone. It's not coming back. A lot, even if we do have another one of those cluster fucks, it's, gonna, it's not going to happen with a $1,200 laptop. It's going to happen with a little two or $300 one at Best Buy where people are not going to be paying you the amount to fix it that you would need to justify the $2,000 or $4,000 or $7,000 investment in a BGA rework machine. And again, when it comes to game consoles, you may wonder why I didn't mention them. You know what I think about reflowing and reballing video chips. And if, you, if, you're, if you're reflowing Xboxes and you're reflowing PlayStation 3s to fix them, and you're, you're calling it repair, you're not calling it data recovery, like get your saved game off of this console now and then get a new one, but you're actually saying this is fixed and will last. 
uh, just, just, just get out of here with that shit. Uh, but that's that's it for today. So yeah, long story short, BGA rework, absolutely a rabbit hole to me. But do I do it occasionally? Do I think you should buy a machine? No. 